I hope I'm saying that right. Where was I? Where was I? Oh, mer mercurial? Mercu I don't know that word. Hi guys, it's been honestly a minute since I have recorded any YouTube videos. Um, first of all, I want to say if you hear this munchkin, he's here. He wants to be involved. I can't stop him. Uh, there's also a good chance that my cat will get involved because they really think this is their YouTube channel and I can't blame them. They're adorable. Um, I'm sure many of you would love for them to be displayed more. They're, they're actually featured a lot more in my streams. So you can see them there. So the video I have for you guys today is going to be a recent library haul. I'm actually on a book buying ban at the moment because I recently joined the gym and I am paying for personal training, which means there are certain areas in my life that I just need to take a step back from a little bit. I will still buy books that are super important to me um, and like things won't completely stop but I have to be more intentional about what books I do buy, which means going back to what I used to do before I joined Bookstagram, which is library halls, using the library, using different avenues to still read books, but spend less money. So I didn't get a bunch of books yesterday, but I couldn't believe that I found these. I didn't really look too hard, so I'm very excited to share them with you. I only got four, so this will be a short, quick video. I got The Sunbear Trials by Aidan Thomas. A lot of my friends have recommended this book to me. Um, I really don't know what it's about, though. I know. Let's see. Let's read. So it says only the most powerful and honorable semi doses, semi doses get chosen. I'm just a jade. I'm not a real hero. As each new decade begins, the sun's power must be replenished so that soul can keep traveling along the sky and keep the chaotic obsidian gods at bay. Soul selects 10 of the most worthy semi-doses to compete in the Sunbearer Trials. The winner carries light and life to all of the temples of the Reno del Sol, but the loser has the greatest honor of all. They will be sacrificed to Soul. Their body melted down to refuel the sunstones, protecting the world for another 10 years. Okay then, so I like it. I'm gonna love the trials. I always love books where there's competitions, where there's high stakes, where there's danger. I hope there's a fun group of characters. So really looking forward to this one. The next book that I picked up is Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. I feel like everybody has read this book but me and I actually still have no idea what it's about. I just bought my first TJ Klune book. Um, I got wolf song i don't know if you can see it but it's right here so i haven't read from this author yet i don't really know what to expect um let's read the synopsis i'm sure so many of you know what it's about so bear with me as i figure it out it says welcome to sharon's i think it's sharon's crossing if not somebody correct me please the tea is hot the scones are fresh and the dead are just passing through when a reaper comes to collect Wallace from his own funeral, Wallace begins to suspect he might be dead. And when Hugo, the owner of a peculiar tea shop, promises to help him cross over, Wallace decides he's definitely dead. But even in death, he's not ready to abandon the life he barely lived. So when Wallace is given one week to cross over, he sets about living a lifetime in seven days. Hilarious, haunting, and kind, Under the Whispering Door is an uplifting story about a life spent at the office and a death spent building a home. Oh, this sounds really good, really impactful. I'm afraid it's going to put me in my feels. Um, I want to know, have you read this one? Is it just me? Let me know. Have you read this author? What book should I pick up from him next? Let me know. The next book I picked up is Camp Zero. I have heard from a lot of my friends that I need to read this book. I heard it is impactful. I heard it's going to make me uncomfy. And honestly, I like branching out. I like reading things that I would never pick up. So many of those books end up actually being favorites of mine. So let's read the synopsis. I don't read synopses at all. 
I usually do not. I go off cover, I go off recommendations, and I go off vibes and authors. That's basically how I pick books. So I we're learning together at the same time. Normally I go in blind. I don't even read these before I pick up the book, but here we are. So it says, in a near future northern settlement, the fates of a young woman, a professor, and a mysterious collective of climate researchers collide in this mesmerizing and transportive debut novel. In remote northern Canada, a team led by a visionary American architect is breaking ground on a building project called Camp Zero, intended to be the beginning of a new way of life. A clever and determined young woman codenamed Rose, is offered a chance to join the Blooms, a group hired to entertain the men in the camp. Her real mission is to secretly monitor the architect in charge. In return, she'll receive a home for her climate-displaced Korean immigrant mother and herself. Rose quickly secures the trust of her target only to discover that everyone has a hidden agenda and nothing is as it seems. Though skillfully braided perspectives, including those of a young professor longing to escape his wealthy family and an all-American military research unit struggling for survival in a climate station, the fate of Camp Zero's inhabitants reaches a stunning crescendo. And this is by Michelle Min Sterling. I'm sorry, I didn't say the author. Michelle Min Sterling. And the last pick, the last book I picked up was on vibes, basically. I don't know that I've read from this author. This is called Imogen, obviously. I feel like this author is the one who also wrote, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's Simon versus the Homo sapien agenda. I love this cover. I love, it's just, it screams spring to me. I love the pink vibes. I love the feminine energy. So let's figure out what it's about. It says Imogen, I hope it's Imogen. Imogen, yeah. Imogen Scott may be hopelessly heterosexual, but she's got the world's greatest ally title locked down. She's never missed a Pride Alliance meeting. She knows more about queer media discourse than her very queer little sister. She even has two queer best friends. There's Gretchen, a fellow high school senior who helps keep Imogen bi biases in check. And then there's Lily, newly out and newly thriving with a cool new squad of queer college friends. Imogen's thrilled for Lily, any ally would be. And now that she's finally visiting Lily on campus, she's bringing her an ally A game. Any support Lily needs, Imogen's all in, even if that means bending the truth just a little. Like when Lily drops a tiny queer bombshell, she told all her college friends that Imogen and Lily used to date, and none of them know that Imogen's a raging hetero, not even Lily's best friend Tessa. Of course, the more time Imogen spends with chaotic, freckle-faced Tessa, the more she starts to wonder if her truth was ever all that straight to begin with. I'm really looking forward to this. I feel like the books that I've chosen are very different, which is so important for me because I'm a mood reader. I really do need them to be completely different. So it feels like I'm going into a different adventure every single time. But here they are. Which one should I start with? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below which ones have you read, which ones are on your TBR, and which one you think I should start with. And thank you so much for being patient with me. I know I haven't been posting consistently, but I am trying my best to make sure that I'm posting at least once a week. And as always, you're welcome to join me on my reading and productivity sprints. I will be doing them Friday nights, and I try to do them Sunday morning until the afternoon. So I'd love to see you there. I'd love to get to know you and to read with you. But thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day. Bye.